Hey guys and welcome to the summit and more importantly welcome to my first review in my Underworld retrospective. I'm going to be reviewing all the films in the Underworld franchise leading up until Underworld Blood Wars. I'm seeing Underworld Blood Wars in theaters this weekend so I'm going to get that review out to you as fast as possible. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. Zach, what are you doing? You already reviewed Underworld. I mean, you did it on your green screen. You even have clips. Kate Beckinsale in tight-ass leather. <sighs> yeah, that's true. I did already review it. But after I got this review out, I realized that my green screen, well, it looks shitty. It just does not look the way that I want it to look. It doesn't have the level of production that I feel that my channel usually has. So I'm not going to be doing any more of those reviews on my green screen. Like I said, my Underworld Evolution review. So I'm going to give you guys a brand new review of Underworld. For the most part, my review of this film is going to stay the same. But there's a few things that I'm going to change. First, no green screen. Like I said, looks like shit. We're not doing it. I think that I'm going to have to suck it up and go buy a real green screen because the fabric that I bought is just not working. Second, I had to leather up. Shout out to my boy Batman. You know what I'm talking about. How do you review Underworld without wearing leather? It's literally not possible. I'm actually reviewing it again. See, I'm telling you the truth. I think officially we're ready to do the first Underworld. So let's get into the review. Underworld stars Kate Beckinsale, Scott Speedman, Michael Sheen, Shane Raleigh, Bill Nye, and is directed by Len Wiseman. Being released a year after Guillermo del Toro's Blade II, we got another vampire film that still had balls. I have nothing against the Blade series. I actually really love the first two, but everything after that is pretty bad. The only real bloodsuckers that we got after Blade II was the Underworld franchise. We didn't get 30 Days of Night or Daybreakers until after the first Underworld. There was another vampire series to come out, and... Why do you exist? But why? We're not talking about that series. Underworld begins with a narration by Kate Beckinsale's character, Selene. She tells us that a great war between the vampire and Lycan clans has ended due to the death of a Lycan leader, Lucian. We all know by now that's not the case, though. This devolves into an awesome subway fight scene. Kate Beckinsale is dope as the vampire death dealer, Celine. She owns this role. At this point, she's an action icon of the 2000s. She's a deadly female vampire that would rather fill your face with bullets than end a conflict with words. Michael Sheen is fantastic as Lucian. This is some really good acting here. I love the contrast between him and his Lycan brothers. He's smooth charming, and really knows how to handle a situation. This film will leave you wanting more of him. Don't worry, we'll get there soon enough. Scott Speedman as Michael Corvin, though, might fly under the radar for your average moviegoer. Most reactions to his name go like this. He was in that one movie. And I don't remember what it was, though. Wasn't he the singer in Creed? All jokes aside, as a human character in this film, Scott Speedman's Michael Corvin plays us. He's caught in the middle of this war between the supernatural. I'm going to tell you guys right now that I don't like Craven. I have nothing against the Craven character because I understand why he's in this film. He's supposed to be a thorn in the side to Celine, but I just couldn't get into Shane Brawley as Craven. I felt like there was something missing. His performance felt a little dull. He might be a great guy in real life, but he just didn't work in this movie for me. I sort of felt like he was the bringer of annoyance and constipated looks. Kevin Garo, I think that's how you say his name, was awesome as Lucian's right hand man, Raz. This guy was a force, and that voice is actually pretty terrifying. I can't do it, but it sounded a little bit like this. I don't remember. I love Bill Nye as an actor. He's one of the best parts of Pirates of the Caribbean 2. He's great in this film as the vampire Lord Victor. There are some scenes where I'm like, um, what? <coughs> the special effects used on him were incredible. This film portrays a unique take on vampire and lycan lore. I love this idea of a centuries old unit of commando-like warriors known as death dealers. Their weaponry was sick, and not just for the vampires, but for the lycans as well. There was no sunlight and an excess use of swords in this film. We get automatic gunfire. Ultraviolet light and silver nitrate turned into rounds. 
How cool does that sound, guys? I was really happy to see in Underworld that the practical slash CGI transformation scenes still hold up. The set design is really creative and it actually reminded me of the Spencer Mansion from the Resident Evil game series. I couldn't help it. When we were invited into the Vampire Coven, that's all I could think of. The cinematography is also top-notch. There was a car sequence in this film that ended up underwater, and it flowed seamlessly. One of the most unique aspects of this film, though, was the blue hue. It's not usually something that we see in an action film. I usually see this kind of stuff in horror movies, like The Ring, Saw... Yeah, movies like that. In the end, guys, I'm going to have to give Underworld a metal claw. A solid cast and a creative take on vampire and lichen lore really helped me get into this movie. As I said, Kate Beckinsale helped cement herself as a 2000s action star with this film. Scott Speedman was also really good in this. If you want another good performance from him, check out The Strangers with him and Liv Tyler. He's really good in that. Who knew that a few years later, Len Wiseman would be directing Die Hard 4? All right, guys, that's it. That's been my review of Underworld. What did you think? Let me know down in the comments down below. If you want to see my review of Underworld Evolution, the best way to do that is hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I'm doing all the films in this series leading up until Blood Wars. Keep an eye out for my Cavern of Terror series. I'm going to be reviewing the Hatchet franchise. The first one in that series is going to be... Hatchet. A modern version of 80s horror. What's better than that? Guys, I would really appreciate it if you check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd because you know I have them. But most importantly, guys, this has been Zach versus the Blu-ray Mountain. Stay metal, my friends. <laughs>